Okay, folks, so here we are back again. Uh, there was a bit of an interruption. Um, that's why that last video was uh, cut short because the bank manager arrived at my door and um, to get me to uh, sign some stuff. It's nice when the bank manager actually goes to your house, uh, you know, and uh, gets you to do stuff, saves you the trick of going there. Anyway, okay, so I don't know if that happens for everybody, but I'm certainly grateful. All right, so now I was talking about um, about uh, poly polyethene. Okay, so this is the result of of uh, ethene. So ethene is um, C2H4, uh, a molecule, and it's a gas. And then, um, as a result of a catalyst, you can actually join all of these molecules together and create a chain. Okay, so. In other words, they join together, physically join together, okay, and uh, and as a result of that, and because they can join together in different ways, um, create plastics. So, so typical plastic, uh, your Glad Wrap or whatever they they call it around your part of the world, called Glad Wrap in our part of the world, or um, uh, it's a brand, uh, or. Uh, it's, you know, that type of plastic that you'd cover your food with. So it's, you know what I mean. Okay. Okay, so that's chains. And then, you know, all of the things like pet bottles and, you know, all the plastics that you see are pretty much along the same lines. Even PVC, all of that polyvinyl chloride. Again, poly meaning that uh, the vinyl chloride um, uh, molecule is, uh, is, uh, is joined together with another one using catalyst and then that produces a polymer, okay? All right, so now you understand what a chain is. Now, there was also another part of the last video that I didn't, uh, I don't think I covered very well. And I started talking to you about the volcano where those un unfortunate people died. And, uh, and the point I was going to make um, was that uh, if you look at some of the videos, uh, actually there was a video uh, produced by, um, by somebody called Kaufman. Um, uh, Alessandro, I think uh, is his first name. And uh, Alessandro Kaufman. So look, look that up, um, and uh, you'll see that um, there's some water there at the volcano, and and actually there's a stream there. And if you have a look at the stream, uh, some of that water is green. Okay, all right. So now this is really interesting. Okay, and the interesting part about it is it's green uh, because of the nickel. Okay, and then if you have a look around the volcano, you'll see the yellow parts. Um, that's covering the rocks and stuff like that. That's sulfur. So sulfur has the sulfur uh, gases have been reduced to sulfur, um, uh, elemental sulfur, and you can actually see the sulfur, you know, all over the place. Um, when you're actually there on a volcano like that, uh, as I explained before, I was. The incredible smell from the sulfur is uh, uh, it's very, very powerful. And in fact, what you're doing is you, you, you're almost breathing in um, um, sulfuric acid. So it's a very dangerous um, place to be in. Um, but, you know, as I said before, lots of fun. Um, but that sulfur gets reduced, uh, that, 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 uh, those sulfur gases get reduced back to sulfur and then you can see the, 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 the sulfur all over, all over the place. So now we know then what comes from uh, beneath the crust. Okay, We don't have to drill, you know... Um, you know, eight miles or more, ten miles or hundred miles, we we can see the volcanoes actually bring the stuff up, and we can see what's there, and we can see that there's nickel there. This we can see this iron, we can see there's nickel. We pretty much know what that stuff's made out of, okay, from analysing uh, the stuff that comes out of volcanoes. So certainly, certainly in the magma. Further down, it's um, uh, you know, as I've said in other videos, um, iron, and then uh, further. Uh, uh, molten iron with nickel. There you go. There's the nickel, and then um, and then uh, we've got um, the the solid iron core at the centre. Now I have explained that already, so I'm not going to go into that. Now we're actually talking about biology here, um, if you like. Okay, or certainly uh, biophysics. Okay, so now you now learnt about chains, so you know that the molecules that molecules can get to that atoms can get together create molecules and molecules can get together to create chains, okay? Now, the point here is that 
we have these molecules called amino acids, okay? So amino acids, if you like, the very, very building blocks of, of, um, uh, of uh, uh, biology, if you like. Okay, so now there's actually identified 20 uh, amino acids. I don't want to go into, great, into any kind of detail about what they are. If you put in the comments that you want to learn about amino acids, I'm happy to go through the whole 20 of them and explain what they're for and where you find them and and how they uh, how they um, uh, contribute to the biology of animals and plants. I'm very happy to do that. So put that in the comments if you're interested. But it's it's pretty heavy stuff. Okay, so the amino acids um, again form chains, just like I said, and they form peptide chains. So they they call peptides. So amino acid chains forming together, great, called peptides. And these are the beginnings of RNA. Okay, all right. So now RNA, as you know, RNA precedes DNA. So we've got the peptide chains, and then the, the peptide chains, they um, they get together and uh, and form protein chains. So so now we're starting to get closer to life, eh? Proteins. So proteins folding chains. So these these chains are able to fold, and the the this is important because because then they can actually um, uh, they're not just long, long chains, but they can, if they fold, then they can other they can have reactions at these folds as well. So it it basically thickens it, if you like, you know, for want of a better word. Okay, so so uh, we have folding uh, protein chains um, that's created as a uh, from those peptide chains. Okay, so so far so good. There's no you know no life here yet. Uh, and well, as far as we can tell, anyway, um, these are chemicals. We can actually reproduce all of this. We can do this in a lab. Okay, so it's not um, it's not like we're thinking um, uh, this happened by magic. Uh, it didn't. It did take a long, long time, but we can reproduce this in a lab. Um, uh, uh, we could create these chains and so on, these proteins, and that, in fact, we do. Um, okay, then. So after that, you can imagine with these protein uh, chains, um, they become cyclical. So they, because they can fold, so therefore they can create cyclical um, ar arrangements. Okay, in these chains. So just try to put your mind there. Think about that. So now, uh, if if you have a look at the board over here, now we, it's these things where we've got now protein uh, rings. Okay, so they cyclical. We can create these protein rings, and these protein rings um, can then be filled, if you like, with with other cyclical molecules. Okay, so again, all stemming from this stuff over here, and eventually this RNA, um, uh, these molecules get together and and make more complex molecules, and then finally um, making DNA. Okay, so. Once we've arrived here at DNA, well, then now there's this little strange thing that has, has to happen. First of all, they, these molecules can replicate themselves, all right? So that's, that's neither here nor there. Molecules will, will, will grow. Chains, um, uh, chain molecules will grow um, regardless of, of, uh, of uh, any kind of human activity. Uh, for instance, you can, you can make crystals grow. You can... Um, uh, you can make a little crystal farm or something like that. Press, put in your crystal, your 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 um, seed, and uh, and the crystals will grow. You don't you don't need to do anything to them except watch them. So molecules will um, join together and they will grow and they will call, create these these uh, polymers and chains. Okay, so that's that's not magic. That's you know that that happens. The thing about it is that what makes them life, okay? So now we have to define what's life. How do you get from this to um, something that can replicate itself, but then, if you like, it uh, it's not just a molecule repli uh, replicating itself, it, but then has to do all sorts of other functions in order for it to be, um, you know, something that's alive. Um, and it's this life business that's uh, 
not really been explained very well. Okay, how we get to this point? That's easy. All right, how we get to that? How we get beyond this? That's not even difficult. Okay, but it's that phase between this and um, and and then life. Uh, that's the tricky bit. Uh, I've got no doubt we'll figure it out. Okay, all right, and there will be an a biological explanation for it. Um, as I said, I'm not a biologist, and there may be some well some studies happening right now that's explaining this perfectly well. Okay, now I should probably do more than just this bit, but I just wanted to look at a biogenesis, okay, uh, and how these molecules got together. But then I hear uh, flat Earth people saying stuff like, uh, "We come from monkeys." Okay, so if we extend this all the way where this becomes a single celled animal or plant, um, and then uh, and then because of its necessity to survive, um, uh, it can replicate itself and it's and it and also um, and also adapt to its surroundings. Okay, and then eventually find its way out of the primordial soup and into the sea and all of that and millions, millions, hundreds, thousands of millions of years and then um, and then well hundreds of millions of years and then and then um, these things eventually bit by bit slowly by slowly one little atom at a time start changing. Okay, and then adapting and re-adapting and dying and changing and you name it, all of those things, and eventually build up, um, you know, uh, some living creatures that again themselves need to adapt. They need to survive, um, and the best amongst them, the ones that adapt the best, survive uh, with their new. Well, new is probably not a good word with their adaptation okay and then so we don't come from monkeys as such we kind of all of these things arrived at a place or a um, creature if you like where both us and monkeys are and and other primates uh, originate from so we were never um, a uh, a um, monkey, okay. We I just happen to be on the same branch of the um, or node of, if you like, of this evolutionary tree, okay. All right. So, if you're a flat earther listening to this, please stop repeating that nonsense that we think we all came from monkeys. That's just absolute garbage, okay. What it is, he's is saying that we share. Uh, uh, ancest ancestral um, traits, okay. All right. So certainly a lot of our DNA, okay. So there you go, DNA. All right. So that's pretty similar. So this molecule for the uh, for uh, all the creatures are similar, okay. All right, um, I think that pretty much covers uh, what I wanted to say about this little bit. Um, I hope you found that interesting. And uh, if you're interested in uh, watching more videos from me, then please press that uh, subscribe button and, uh, and the like button. And, you know, I'll be interested in doing some more, okay? Uh, what will I do next time? Oh, yes, I'm, I'm planning on doing um, some stuff with photons and light. So, uh, so look out for that. Um, um, I especially want to see how photons, what they are, uh, how do we perceive them, and uh, and then how do they, um, uh, how do they apply in our everyday life? How do they behave? And then, uh, and how do we use them? How do they generate electricity for us? And um, and what's possible in the future because of photons? All right, we'll have a look at some of that. In another video. Okay, thank you very much for watching. Cheers.